Vicki Gould is a law of attraction business and book coach with nine best-selling books like Hit Publish and Standing in the Gap. She's passionate about helping people live their legacy today through sharing her stories and she has helped 92 others become bestsellers worldwide. Welcome to the stage. I'm so excited to be here to be able to share with you guys today. Like Karen said, a lot of people may know me actually as the woman who has nine best-selling books. Some people might know me as the words lady because I'm all about words and stories. And some people might know me through the 92 bestsellers that I have out in the world. But there was a day in my life that came by just not too long ago. It was July 5th. 2018 and my husband had texted me a couple times and he said I can't get a hold of my dad and I said well you know he's probably at an appointment you know some of those walls at the doctor's office are pretty thick you can't get through you know he's probably out around town they had started texting each other every morning for the last three years since my mother-in-law had passed away because dad lived alone. He was really spry. He was always out gardening. We talked about how he would canvas the neighborhood to be on the board of the association when he was walking the dog. Everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. And on that day, my husband decided he was going to drive over there because he couldn't get a hold of him. And I got this call. And he said, he's gone. And I was like, how is that even possible? I didn't think it was real. And the only words that could come out of my mouth was, what do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. What do you want me to do? And things were swirling around in my head about the appointments I had that day, the clients I had that day. And I said, I'm coming now. And I canceled all of them and drove over. And on the way over, I just kept thinking, it's not really real. When I get there, it's not going to be real. And in the meantime, I called my own dad. And I said, I don't know what to do. What are we supposed to do? Because we knew that we were in charge of everything after his passing, we had talked about that. Even though I didn't want to know, want to think it was true, deep down I knew it was true because I got the call. And here's the thing about the next few weeks went away as a blur. I was numb. And I kept thinking, how can everybody else go through their life as if nothing has happened? This huge thing has happened. Haven't you noticed? And in those following weeks, I came to know, because we had to call so many people, how much he was loved. His whole church was grieving. People canceled vacations to be at his funeral. And they talked about these long hugs that he would give. You know, you hug people and you kind of pat them on the back and, you know, it's like it's just a short greeting and everybody just kind of, when you would normally let go, he was always still holding on. And so you learned when you gave grandpa a hug, you hug for extra long until he lets go first because otherwise it's a little awkward. <laughs> and I had thought, I had many things had gone on in my life already. I had dealt with chronic illness. I had looked death in the eye. But this really made me reevaluate a lot of things. I realized that the legacy that he left was one that I wanted for me. I wanted people, when I was gone, to say, I loved her hugs. 
Her smile made me feel so loved. He was always happy. He was always happy to see me. He made me feel special. She made me feel special. That's what I wanted people to say about me. And it was interesting because of my past chronic illness that I thought, well, I've already evaluated life. I've already figured things out. I've already figured out how to be happy. And it was during that time that I realized that nothing much matters in life except the impact that you have on the world because that's what's still here once you're gone. We had asked Dad to share his stories with us. We wanted to write them down. My husband had one day a month where he would go out to lunch with Dad. And one of Dad's best friends, one of the neighbors, said he was giddy like a little kid for those days that my husband was having lunch with him. And he would tell her, yep, Mike called. Yep, we're going out next Tuesday. Yep, we're going to Panda Express. But he didn't think anybody would care about any of the stories that he had within him. But those stories were the stories that made him who he was. The stories that we have inside us make us who we are. Those struggles that we've gone through, the happy times that we've gone through, that makes us exactly who we are. And a lot of times, in the depth of our struggles, in the depths of the why me? Why am I going through this? Is the encouragement and inspiration and healing that you can give to somebody else. And that's why I am so passionate about books, about helping people to share their story across the world, and leaving their legacy now in a way that they are proud of because we never know when we're going to be gone. Your story matters, even if you don't feel like it's something that somebody wants to hear. There is somebody out there waiting for you to show up, waiting for you to give them encouragement, because they may be in a place where they have no hope, and you're the only person that's in their corner. So I would encourage you to think about those stories that you have in your life. Think about those places that you've been to because, like I said, the why me is exactly why you went through that journey. Sometimes that journey is because you were there to help somebody else. And people ask me, I don't know how to share my story. I'm going to be judged for my story. I'm scared to tell my story. What is my family going to think if I share this? Or maybe there's somebody that you're sharing about that doesn't want you to tell about their part in your life. And sometimes what you have to think about is the impact that you're going to have on other people rather than yourself. People ask me so much, how do I get over this fear of telling my story in a way that is vulnerable, is transparent, is authentic? And it's that spot where you're saying, gosh, should I share that? Ooh, could I really tell them that? That's exactly what people need to hear. And the way you get over the fear is to think less about yourself and more about the impact that you're going to have on the world. Because all of us in this room, I'm sure, have something that we could share with somebody. Whether your impact is within your family, whether your impact is within your community, your state, your nation, or the world, there is a reason, and you have a possibility of creating impact in somebody else's life as a wounded healer, a wounded change maker, whatever has gone through your life. You get over the fear by thinking of those people that are struggling and waiting for you. So... I encourage you now 
that if you're one of the 82% of the population who says, I want to write a book, I think I want to write a book, don't be left in the other set that starts it, never finishes it, writes it, leaves it on their computer. 82% of the population wants to write a book. That also means that somewhere deep down inside, 82% of the population knows that there's a story that somebody needs to hear. And you all have stories as well that can help change the world just like the 92 best-selling authors that I have. So go do that and share your story and go change the world. <laughs>